Hello and welcome to my studio. This is a tutorial all about glass cutting. How to use glass cutters, how to use pliers, how to cut glass in a safe way to get the best results for you. Hello and welcome to my studio. My name is Derek Hunt. I'm a professional glass artist. If you are a subscriber, welcome back. It is fabulous to see you. And if you're new to the channel, I make inspirational videos and tutorials all about stained glass and today's tutorial is all about glass cutting the equipment that you'll need and the way to use that equipment in a safe way to get the best results so without any further ado let's get into the key components that you'll need to start your glass cutting journey so the first thing that you'll need is a pair of safety goggles um, glass does tend to splinter and fracture in unusual ways and surprising ways and even although you might be wearing a pair of glasses like me putting a pair of safety goggles on top is absolutely key you will also need a pair of gloves if you are new to glass cutting i'd strongly suggest you wear gloves we all cut ourselves i'm a professional glass artist i've been doing this for 36 years i still cut myself from time to time now let's look at glass cutters. Generally speaking, glass cutters come in this form. They're known as pencil cutters um, or pen cutters. They're, they're the regular type of glass cutters th that we use. They come in solid uh, body form like this or in clear. The reason that there is a tube like this is usually to fill it with oil. I would recommend that you don't fill it with oil. The reason I say that is it inevitably leaks and goes all over the glass and sometimes goes over your drawing i'll show you a way of oiling this tip without actually having to fill the reservoir with oil another alternative is this which is a really interesting little design which sits in the crook of your hand like this and it allows you to hold the glass cutter and with a little bit of extra support again you may want to try this in the hobby shop before you purchase just to see if it's convenient for you we also have this type of cutting grip which is called a pistol grip and it is held like this with your thumb over the top and you can pull or push the glass cutter like this and for a lot of people this is the most convenient method it's not the way i use but i recognize that everybody's hands are different sizes everybody has different strengths in their wrists and in the forearms so sometimes a, pe a pistol grip such as this is the best way forward you will also need to buy pliers. These are known as grozing pliers. They are called grozing pliers because they grows glass. Now, grozing means basically to nibble glass. You nibble the edges of a, a piece of glass in order to create a shape. Another handy device are these breaking pliers, which are specifically designed for breaking glass. You will need a T-square or a set square such as this for creating right angles. Uh, quite a lot of glass that you'll be cutting is for borders around a, a leaded glass window or a stained glass window. So you'll want to be able to cut strips of glass in a nice easy way. Uh, the other thing that you will need is of course a tape measure. A, a running tape measure like this is really useful whether it's in metric or imperial, whatever uh, is suited for you. Uh, a, a good tape measure is key with cutting glass as well. So as you can see here, the glass cutter has a small wheel, a tungsten carbide wheel that sits on the front of the glass cutter like this, which has a very slight wedge to it, a little peak, and it is drawn across the surface of the glass to create a weakness in the top surface of the glass. Um, now, generally speaking, as I say, I tend not to put oil in the inside of the tube. I tend to use a reservoir of oil that I've made already in a little container such as this. I've just put some little cotton wool buds in there and I fill it with WD-40. That's all I use. And whenever I'm ready to cut the glass, I dip the glass cutter in the oil reservoir and it's good to go. So looking at the pliers, these are the grozing pliers. And as you can see, if you're looking closely at it, there is a flat jaw and there is a curved jaw. And the important thing to remember is that the flat jaw is the top side of the pliers and the curved jaw is the bottom side of the pliers. In practice, what that means is when you come to cut a piece of glass, you will introduce the pliers like this with the flat surface on top and the curved surface underneath. So let's show you how to cut glass. I'm going to put the safety gloves on because I suggest you also put your safety gloves on when you're starting this process of learning how to do it properly. 
I've got my glass cutter here, my oil reservoir, a little dip of oil. I've also got my set square. As you, as you can see, the set square has these lines on either side, which are very useful for the lining up the, the set square with the bottom edge of the glass. The important thing when cutting glass is how to hold the glass cutter correctly. I tend to hold the glass cutter like this, as if it's a, a pen that I'm writing with. I find that the most convenient way. I also see people holding glass cutters like this, between their two fingers. Again, that is something that is a convenient way of cutting with glass, cutting with a, a glass cutter. I even see people holding a glass cutter like this with a clenched fist. I don't suggest that that's the best way of doing it. And the reason for it is if you can learn to hold a glass cutter like you're holding a pen, it's very easy to then turn the glass cutter. And later on when you're cutting curves and cutting intricate shapes, being able to rotate the glass cutter like this is really helpful. I hold it with the screw head facing forward. That is the front of the glass cutter. That is the glass cutter held upside down. So it is important to remember that that little screw head there always has to be pointing forwards because that then allows the glass cutter to operate properly. Now, the other thing to remember when you are uh, approaching the glass is to hold the glass cutter vertical or 90 degrees to the glass. Don't try and hold the glass cutter at a slight angle because it won't cut well. It won't cut properly. It's got to be held at 90 degrees to the level of the glass like this at a slight angle. So I'm holding the glass cutter, as you can see here, not, not vertically like this. I'm holding it at a 45 degree angle to the glass. You can always tell when you're making a good glass cut by the sound that it makes. So have a listen to the sound of how glass should sound when you're cutting it. So the glass cutter has popped off at the end here and then we have a score in the glass like this. Now this is the weak point in the glass so that it allows us then to take our glass cutter with the ball end here, the brass ball end and very gently tap the back side of the glass like this. And can you see it has started to create a fracture along the glass line. Now what I tend to do is then I use my hands to break the glass. The important thing with this is to keep your fingers away from the line. So we curl our fingers around one side and curl our fingers around the other and then we break in a downward motion like this. So let's just draw a couple of shapes here. And I'm using my pinky or my small finger as a sort of a guideline just to maintain a nice even pressure and an even consistency over the surface. I now have a fracture which you possibly can or maybe can't see there with the camera. So I'm going to use the back end of my glass ply, uh, my glass cutter to create a slight fracture. Let's just continue it like this. And here we have a beautiful set of curved lines. Okay, so let's look at slightly more complicated shapes like this. If you want to take a sort of a bite-sized chunk out of a piece of glass like this, how do you do it? How do you remove this section of glass? I'll show you how that's done now. So as you can see there is the fracture. Hopefully you can see that. Um, but what we're going to do, because we want to remove all of this glass here, I'm going to make another series of fractures, concentric lines and scores across this area that we want to remove in the score. It's important that the scores don't go over this outside line. So we just go up close to the outside line, but without going over it. So what we then have, can you see that? is a series of scores across the surface of the glass. This is the bit that you have to work gently with, not tapping too hard. And we hold the glass like this and we pull in a 
downward at very gentle downwards motion and we pull outwards very gently and we begin to remove the pieces of glass that I've made into smaller fractures like this. <laughs> 